Do you want to know what makes an eyelid grow? Then everybody watch Dean Show, The Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. That's the wonderful greeting of peace. Peace be unto you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show where we're trying to help you understand Islam and Muslims. And Islam simply means to acquire peace by submitting your will to the owner of peace, the one God, the creator of all that exists, the creator of man and woman, the creator of the sun and the moon, the creator of this whole universe, that's the one God we're talking about. Now, he has sent throughout time messengers and they came with that same message, worship the creator and not his creation. They came with a comprehensive system on how the human being needs to live his life. But now, there's another part, another facet to this, patience. It requires some patience to stay away from the evil things that are out there calling you day and night. And how can we acquire this? We need some more advice. We need teachers to teach us, qualified individuals. And we, want, we got one of those qualified individuals here today. He's back with us again, Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane. We'll be right back with more on The Dean Show. Allah, there's only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. How are you, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah. Thank, thank you for trying to, trying to be with us here again on the Dean Show. You're a regular here. It's always a pleasure. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this work. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on his religion that he chose for mankind, the religion of Islam. Amen. Amen. <laughs> People can go to thedeanshow.com. You have your own private section there. It has your biography. Tells the people a little bit about you, who you are, what you're doing, and the previous shows we've done with you. Now, today, because time is short, we get straight into the topic. Today we want to talk about patience. It requires a lot of patience doing the good, staying steadfast hmm. on doing all the wonderful things that the Creator has told us to do in the verbatim Word of God, the Qur'an. Hmm. So we want some advice because sometimes people, male and female, they feel like slipping. It's hard to sometimes get up for that early morning prayer. You've got to be patient. Sometimes it's hard. You want to take that sip of some of that stuff, they'll make your mind go loose. You know what I mean? You want to let loose, but you can't. You've got to refrain. So talk to us about the importance of patience. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. Patience, or it's in Arabic called sabr. And the word sabr literally means something that is bitter. That means it doesn't taste good in the beginning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, ordered the believers, mentioned patience in the Quran for over the 90 times in the Quran. 90 times. 90 times in the Quran. Over than that, with regards to patience, the rewards of it, the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people to be patient and the reward for the people in the hereafter and in this life. And with these orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it shows that when the Most High created the human beings, everybody endure patience, one way or the other. Anybody, Muslims, non-Muslims, in our daily life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this life in such a way that if we leave your home, for example, without cleaning it, for a few days it becomes dirty. You have to have patience to clean it. You have to have patience to earn money. You have to have patience to study. And people would look ahead that he would earn after a few years of studying and hard work and things like this. He, how would a person steadfast in his studying and his learning and so on? It's by patience. Patience carry the person to reach his goal. This is a fact. And Allah the Most High, the Most Merciful, made this in the life of the people so, don't know, so that nobody will have an excuse saying I can't have patience. You already have patience in many things. And that's why when it comes to matters of the hereafter, worshiping the creator of the heavens and the earth alone, obeying the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to have the hearts attached to the hereafter. This life is so, so short and everybody shall depart from it. So to be patient, to seek the rewards from the creator of the heavens and the earth that a person would receive in the hereafter, that needs patience. And that's why patience is of three types as it's mentioned in the Qur'an. To be patiently away from sins and the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade. And by the way, the sins in Islam 
as it's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu it's all evil things. The most high, the most merciful, the most wise, he did not forbid his creation from something that is a necessity in their life or something that would bring any goodness to them. It's all the immediate passion or the immediate attachment that if people would look ahead, and this is the difference between the human beings and others, if they would just look ahead and they would think and make right decisions, they would see that all these things that are sins, it's something that is all evil, even if it brings some joy, temporary joy that brings after that misery in this life and in the year after. So to be patient away from sins because we want to preserve our iman, our faith. The faith increases and decreases, increases with good deeds and decreases with bad deeds. And a sin is not just a sin versus a good deed, it affects the heart, it decreases the iman, it decreases the structure that you build with the good deeds and being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being in the state of sin decreases all of that. So that's why this is something that would help the believers to be always in state of patience and many other reasons. Like when a person went to the Prophet ﷺ and he told them, give me the permission to commit zina, adultery. The Prophet ﷺ did not tell him, this is what are you asking for. He said, do you like this for your mother? Do you like this for your aunt? Do you like this for your sister? People with sound nature, they won't like these things for their own selves. So then the Prophet ﷺ told them, the same way people don't like it for themselves, you should not like it for your own self and for others. So by thinking this way, and this is what we need to call people to do, we need to think. Many people on the face of earth now, they're not thinking properly. They're just busy with the daily activities and the desires and things of that nature. They don't think to see what is right and what is wrong. I don't think anybody on the face of earth would say patience is a bad thing. Not everybody would agree patience is a good thing. Yes. But it depends on what are you trying to achieve. So being patient away from sins, being, being patient to apply the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As human beings, we tend to be lazy. We don't like anybody to tell us do this or not to do that. But when we know that this is something that we are nothing but servants of the creator of the heavens and the earth, we need to humble ourselves to him. We eat from his provisions. All the favors from Allah is showers us all around us. That means we need to be shy from him, that we be obedient to him. Mm -hmm. And he said that, after this life, for those who are obedient, they would enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people need to be patient. Is there a verse in the verbatim word of God Almighty Allah, the Quran, that Allah is saying, and can you explain us that indeed those without account are the patient? Those on that day that are without account are the patient? It's a good point because many verses in the Quran with the rewards of good deeds, you would find the rewards, 10 rewards, multiplications of that. But when it came to patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what you said here, that the rewards is without a limit. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حساب. That إِنَّمَا means indeed. يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ which means the sabirun, those who have patience, they are given in full the rewards without account, With, without limits. Without limits. Without so limits. if you do one good deed, you get ten rewards, right? right. Right. And then it can be multiplied, but here, what there is no limit to how much reward you can be from holding back. Like the person says something, you offend you, and you want to knock them in the mouth. You say, oh, oh no, I shouldn't be doing, yeah. I can't do that. Islam doesn't let me to uh, hurt somebody, so you're patient for the creator. That's correct. And that's why it's a deed done by the heart. Mm -hmm. There's no such a thing as he's patient, meaning physically patient. Yeah. No, it's something that it's roots in the hearts, and then it shows its effect in our outside appearance. Was there a hadith, is there a hadith where the... Prophet, peace be upon him, he was sitting with Abu Bakr Siddiq, and this man came, and can you go ahead and elaborate, he was insulting Abu Bakr and the Prophet, and then the angels were writing, can you go ahead, and was this about patience also? Right, and the Prophet وسلم, was uh, being revealed to him, yeah. this is one of the benefits of the wahi, the revelation from Allah, that we get to see the unseen, Yeah. and when the Prophet وسلم, was seeing that, and was seeing that his companion was patiently responding to this person, and then when he got angry and he wanted to respond in an unpermissible way, the Prophet ﷺ told him from the unseen that the angels were supporting him. While, while he wasn't snapping while he, back. While he was in patience. patience. While he was practicing it. Yeah. And once he got it into himself as a personal thing, then the protection was lifted. He was left to his own self. Big lesson for us, isn't it? Definitely. And that's why if a human being is left for his own self, he is perished. Yeah. Unless we are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are in loss. That's why if I, if, if I go back to the three parts of patience, being patient away from sins, 
being patient to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do it. The third type is to be patient whenever a calamity hits. We are human beings and that's why if I have the time I would like to give you uh, or to the viewers uh, something to make it easy for us. Let, let, let's, let's hold off on sure. that and we're going to come back and we'll talk more on this topic. Patience. Yeah. We'll be right back on the Deen Show. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Allah. There's only one Walter say to me, why are you becoming Muslim? No, I, I give a very frivolous answer. I say, I want to be on the side of the angels. Tupac is a guy, he's the number one rap artist in the world. He sold over 60 million records worldwide. 60 million? 60 million. He was a young guy who had basically everything that some of the youth would think that life is all about. He had everything you can imagine. The Dean Show. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane. Please continue where you left off before we went on a break. Anything that happens in our life, there is something before it and there's something after it. If something happens to us and something sad has to happen in our life, this is the wisdom of the Creator of the heavens and earth. Either we'll die or someone that is a loved one will die. Something bad happens to a person. So we need to prepare ourselves for what's coming ahead by having always been putting the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by taking the means, the physical means, the permissible means, while the hearts attached to the creator of the heavens and the earth, putting our trust in him, that everything happened by the full and the perfect wisdom of the Most High. Nothing happens like that without a wisdom. And then if something bad happens to the person, immediately after that, he is pleased with the qadr, with the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have, as one of the scholars give it, that two things that uh, around the qadr, around the destiny of Allah, the tawakkul, to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it, and to be pleased and patient when it comes to after what happened to the person. Why? Because we are nothing but servants of the creator of the heavens mm -hmm. and the earth, and these are acts of worship. Yeah. We lose it sometimes. You know, it's a rat race out there in life, and things get in the hustle and bustle, and traffic, and this and that, and sometimes it's easier said than done. But when we hear from the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the same way Jesus was a messenger at his time, Moses, Abraham, they were all calling the people to the same thing. And they had the ultimate gems of wisdom because it was coming not from their desires, but from the creator of the heavens and the earth. So when we hear some of these sayings of the prophet, authentic, these aren't lullabies or stories, fables, these are authentic sayings. So can you elaborate on another one? Because did the prophet, peace be upon him, said the person also, when he reframes from, from even when he's, right but he doesn't get into the argument what does it mean Allah will build him a house in Jannah right this is again it's an act of worship yeah act of worship that means we have to submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high when it comes to this act of worship people reward one another yes if people are nice to me I'm nice to them if they're not nice to me I won't be nice to them this is not an act of worship this is basically just rewarding one another Allah the most high wants something else extra from them if people are nice to you, you're nice to them. If they're not nice to you, you still need to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regarding to your affairs with them. And that's why when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa peace be upon him, when he said, when people are arguing, and when arguments comes in place, it's not about finding the truth, it's about who would win for his own personal glory. So the Prophet sallallahu said, whoever leaves argument, while he is on the truth, he presented the truth. The truth is clear. And one characteristic for the truth, that if it stands in front of the falsehood, the falsehood cannot stand in front of it. So he explained the truth of the Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and the matter is clear. But then the other person still wants to argue. In that case, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever leaves such argument, which means he is on the right side, he's on the truth, Allah the Most High will build a house for him in the outskirts of Jannah. And this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
because not every human being can do this. You are on the right side. You're not someone that's trying to prove something wrong. You know that you are correct. And you would feel that this person defeated you. He might think that he defeated you. Might be your ego also. Right, being, yeah. definitely. And that's why when a person suppress this for the benefit, for the sake of the creator of the heavens and earth alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, nothing is wasted. And that's why one important statement that we need to understand very well, that whoever leaves anything for the sake of Allah, not for any worldly benefit, for the sake of the creator of the heavens and the earth, he would never feel the loss of it. Never. Never. If he's truthfully leaving it for the sake of the creator of the heavens and earth. So male or female, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It might be something immediate feels, needs some struggle, and then eventually after that he, would, he or she would feel no loss whatsoever in what they left behind. We're all human beings. Yeah. If human beings, some of them would say, I cannot leave this, whatever sin they are doing. Other human beings, if you give them, even push them to do it, they would rather be killed than to do the same sin. Yeah. Why is that when the temptations are the same? Some people worked on themselves, they thought about it, they made decisions, they turned to the creator of the heavens and the earth, and it's just a short period of time and it becomes in their norm. But others, are, they surrendered themselves to their desires, and they chose to live a life like how the animals do. Yeah, so we don't want to live like the animals, we want to live right. like the Most High has told us to live right. according to His guidance, not our desires. Right. And that is something logical, rational. Now let's get to the nitty gritty of some, some real practical examples. You know that man is attracted to woman, woman to man, and sometimes it requires a lot of patience not to do it the wrong way, but to do it the right way. Right. Can you talk to us about this? Right. This is also something that is mentioned in the Quran and in the life of the Prophet ﷺ because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. The family structure in Islam is something very important. It is the right of every human being to be raised in a healthy family. He sees the father and the mother and there is no chaos in the household with cheating and things like this. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected us with the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's against one's desires if we leave our desires to be the leading thing to us. Either the desires would lead us or the truth would lead us and the desires comes after it. If Allah the Most High forbidden adultery and what comes before it, this religion is so perfect. If adultery is forbidden, then what leads to it has to be forbidden. Otherwise, no human being except very few. If they are right by the sin and by the real temptation, most of the human beings, even if it's a righteous person, would fall into that sin. That's why Yusuf salam, Prophet Yusuf salam, we have a surah in the Quran, chapter in the Quran about him. Why? Because he was patient when he faced the wife of uh, the person in Egypt. She was a beautiful woman. She has status. He was a slave to her. That means he has to obey her. He was a stranger. That means if he do something, nobody would blame him. She was ordering him. She was threatening him that he would be in the prison if he does not commit this act to her. And he was a single man. He was not married. That means all the means of falling into the sin was there and she closed the doors and everything like that. Everything is ready for it. But then when he chose to have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he patiently stayed away from that, we still tell today how many people on the face of earth, even now at this second that I'm speaking, are reciting Surah Yusuf and his praise is being mentioned. What would happen if he had committed this sin? Nobody would have heard about him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised his mention as a result of being patiently for just a few minutes, obeying the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Patient. Wa patient. Back to patient. So that's why the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to hijab, lowering the gaze, all of this is to protect ourselves, protect our iman, our faith, to protect our children, to protect the family, to protect the society in general. All of that is from the most wise subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when a person, as the Prophet sallallahu which is a very good hadith, we are weak. If a person falls into the sin of looking at something that is not permissible for him to look, to look the Prophet ﷺ said, go back to your wife and have relations with her because she has what you saw. Because the shaitan beautifies in your eyes what you see. And it's not true exactly what you see is what you see. Shaitan, the devil, is making it more appealing than what it is. In your wife, she has what you are seeing and that's why the Prophet ﷺ, practical advice, no shyness in the religion. Do that as a way to expiate your sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful. So this is like an arrow in the heart when a person looks at something that is not permissible. So we need to take the means. The Prophet ﷺ said to the young people, if you have the means, the physical means to get married, get married. This is the religion of Islam, not to stay 
syllabus without getting married and thinking that that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, get married, be productive in the society and protect yourself. The Prophet ﷺ said that when a man have his relations with his wife, he get rewards for it. And the companions عنهم, they said he would get rewards while he's fulfilling his desire. The Prophet ﷺ said if he would do it in the haram, in a sinful way, would he get a sin? They said yes. So he said والسلام, so the same way if you do it in the halal, in the permissible way, you get rewards for it. Yeah, tell, tell us Shaykh now where the youth and those men, young adults, and they're being patient. They are worshipping the one God alone, establishing the prayer, and doing all the good wholesome things that God Almighty Allah wants them to do. But now, what advice do you give to them and the parents because they get to an age and now, okay, they're holding back those desires. You know, sometimes it's very difficult. They want to get married, but the parents say, you know what? You need to finish another six years of, of medical school. You should be the best doctor. You should be the best scientist. You should, as we should, be the best to benefit mankind. But now they are more concerned about their son getting a PhD or MD, but the patients are wearing off because we're natural human beings. What about this situation? Well, this is a sad situation, and you just said that this morning after Fed, I was talking with a young brother, and he was explaining the same problem. Same problem? Same problem. Let, let's hold off right there. They're saying we got to go to break. Don't lose your place. We'll be right back with this live example here on the Dean Show. <laughs> All of the prophets would have been labeled Muslims because this essential message was the same message, submission to the will of God. This is God talking to you directly. How could I stand behind the pulpit on Sunday morning and preach a sermon that I knew was at variance with the actual taproot of Christianity? Back here on the Dean Show, and before, sorry we had to cut you off, we had to go to break, but please continue, I hope you didn't lose your place. So after Fajr prayer this morning, a young Muslim, and he had the, the samt, the look of the sunnah on his face, mashallah, and he was asking me the same question, the same problem, that he's young, he's going to college, and all these temptations are there, and he have been practicing Islam not too long ago, and he wants to get married, but the problem is with his parents, they're telling him not before he finishes college and so on and so forth. And this is a sad thing because we are human beings. If we ask someone to stay away from these temptations, that it's forbidden to have a girlfriend, it's forbidden to look at someone that is not proper clothed and so on and so forth, then we, we are basically ordering people to do the impossible. So that's why we need to make it easy for them and it's the call for the parents, for the Muslim parents, have mercy onto your children. Don't think when they're hiding to you that they are tempted and they want to fall into these types of sins, everybody would say, my son is not that way, my, my, my daughter is not that way. They're human beings. What do you mean they're not that way? You need to help them to protect themselves. And the first thing to protect themselves is not to tell them, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as the Prophet ﷺ said, get married. He said this. He said that. Get, get married, married first. If you're not did, able to get married, yeah. then fast. Did he say get married after you get the PhD? He didn't say that, of course. No. And that's why, when, and this is another point that many people might disagree with me, but uh, the par a parent would say, but how he's gonna going to support his wife, right? If he's now going to school and he's such a well-mannered person and things like this, eventually, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him life, he will graduate and he will work and he will make money. If he is being helped while he's doing this, if he can support his own self, and eat and drink and have a shelter, another person with him won't cost him anything. Actually, when we look into the means as physical means only, we are in loss. There's no difference between us and anybody else. We have the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ teaching us there are other set of means that people do not know except by the revelation from Allah. The means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, and one of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran clearly, if they are poor in the context of being married, get the men and women get married to each other. If they are poor, Allah the Most High will make them rich out of His bounty. Mm -hmm. So he, it's mentioned in the Quran, the same reason why people would hold back on marriage is because they're poor, they don't have enough or the status and the degree and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuting this call by saying Allah will make them rich. That's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion of the Prophet said, how can a person hearing this verse and doesn't get married to be rich? 
If you want to be rich, get married. Opposite to what people say. This is now a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to you, if you want to make money, if you want to be rich, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, bless your provisions, get married, your provisions will be blessed. Because you're obeying the orders of Allah, especially you're getting married to protect your religion. Not getting married just for the lusts of it, but to protect your religion. So the parents can go ahead and do what the Prophet said for them to do and come together in a wholesome way in marriage because if you don't, and then they can continue school. They don't have to stop school because you got married and now those, those psychologically, physically, those desires are going to be met. Otherwise, they're going to go through the back door, aren't they? A lot of them end up going and doing it anyways, but the wrong way. And the shaitan has his ways. When a person commits a sin, the shaitan will come to him and tell him, you are a bad person. You cannot stand in the salah. You need to stay away totally from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for one sin, he would lead them to even sometimes renegate from the deen of Islam. And this is another thing. If a person out of weakness fell into a sin, we need not to be despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance. And a person, if he commits a sin, it doesn't mean that he abandons the salah. If he goes to the prayers in the masjid, he needs to keep doing that. Even if he committed a sin, return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance. Never give up. Never give up. And it's the responsibility of the communities that they need to support the young adults in their community, putting them together in the same classrooms, in the same environment, and we tell them you need to stay away from each other. How can that happen? This is against the human nature. We need to protect them by getting them married, and for those who are not able to get married, the advice of the Prophet وسلم, to fast. Because the most important thing is to save your religion. Wait for the, for the, for the favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to you. We cannot sustain the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and in the hereafter. So we want to strive, like you said earlier, we're almost out of time, for the hereafter. No one deaf is coming, as you said, and avoid argumentation, stay patient. That is mentioned over, you said, 90 times in the Qur'an. Yes. And patient, not to go towards the boyfriend, girlfriend, get married. And the parents also, as you mentioned, help the children, don't oppress the children. Last closing comments and suggestions, please. Our life, one of the two acts of worship that we always in that state is patience and being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to practice this patience is to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us. It's not a negative action. It's something that we are positively doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us patiently and at the same time being grateful to him that he gave us the life and the health and everything like that so we need to be patient to fulfill his orders and to submit ourselves otherwise what submission submission is not just in one thing or the other submission in all of our affairs in everything we say everything we do in any state that we are in we need to be submitters to the creator of the heavens and earth thank you very much may Allah the creator of the heavens and earth reward you once again for being with us here well, yeah, thank you very much, Shane. MashaAllah, God will it like that, and it is so exciting. I'm telling you, it's exciting. This is a blessing, not only for myself being here, benefiting from the knowledge, but you also, you tuned in, and now you got to learn some more about the way of life that brings you peace, Islam. Everything is comprehensively, it's there. All you got to do is learn it, implement it, live it, and keep tur turning back here to the Dean Show every week for a new show. And we'll see you next time, God willing. Until then, peace be unto you. He created the universe. To Him belong the heavens and the earth. The ever-living, He is the first. He's the owner of mercy He sent his messengers To warn his creatures Of the grave dangers Of worshipping other than Allah There is none greater than the